Andrew, Roger, thanks for taking time out to join us. Uh, just for a bit of a catch up, looking back at last season, looking forward to the coming season and beyond. Probably start off with the most latest breaking news and the Guinness Pro 14 expansion mm -hmm. and the introduction of South African teams. There's been a lot of discussion around it, some confusion, but it's very positive news, I think, for the Ospreys and for the competition. Um, I think positive is the word, Peter, uh, most definitely. Um, uh, very encouraging um, to see the, the progressive nature of, of Pro 14. Um, if you look at the professional, the professional game, um, it's obviously well documented that financially Pro 12 has always lagged behind uh, the Aviva Premiership, T14, etc. Um, but the effort that's been put in by the, uh, the new regime, uh, fronted up by Martin Anahi, um, has come to fruition, and I think we're all we're all very excited by it. Um, it, it presents a, a challenge rugby-wise, um, which is which is first and foremost, different styles, different venues, etc. Um, obviously, there's a financial benefit, which in the professional era is more than welcome. Um, but also, I, th I think it, 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 it's and perhaps not many people have picked up on this. It's broken the mould of northern southern, southern hemisphere rugby. And I think we're all um, would be delighted to see um, uh, a season, a season structure that's a lot better for players and for fans as regards a flow of fixtures from competition to competition. It's a bit of a dog's breakfast at the moment, but I think if we, th th this could be the first step towards a global season, which I think is very, very important for players, spectators, everybody concerned. But in summary, um, very excited by it. Um, another pleasing fact is, is the speed at which it was done. Normally, rugby administration uh, is ponderous to say the least, and it's an anathema, changes an anathema. This was done at record speed, um, which again is, uh, is, is encouraging. Um, and yes, it was maybe a bit frustrating for fans, etc., players, coaches, but I think um, when the dust has settled, you'll find it's been a very good move. In the initial changes, we've got two teams coming in. We're looking forward to going down to Bloemfontein at the end of September. And then you've got the two South African sides coming to the Liberty in the second part of the season. But where does it go from there? Is it wider expansion plans? Is there a possibility of more South African teams coming up in years to come? Looking east, looking west, where does it go from there? I, I, I think, that, well, well, not I think, I, I know there are lots of discussions taking place against it. This is, this is step one, and I think um, Scotland have, um, have been rather vociferous in sort of saying this, this is just the beginning. And that again excites us because the Pro, the pro 14 as it is now must be innovative, must be innovative to, um, to yeah. compete and to give us a better platform financially and a better platform from a, from a playing point of view. So discussions are, are taking place and there's been various uh, uh, sort of articles in the media about, uh, obviously about America, etc. But I think you'll see that um, uh, the good hands that the management, uh, the, the good hands that uh, the Pro 14 is in now, again, as I said, fronted by Martin Anahi, um, who's proven an exceptional uh, chief executive, um, very progressive in his thinking, very innovative, and I think we can only but benefit from that. Yeah, and to add to that, I mean, just working with, um, with World Rugby, they know that the, the territories they want to expand into eventually, at the right time, would be Spain and Germany as well. And the way the league is constructed, it gives the flexibility to, to look at that at, at, at the correct time. I think it's only fair to point out that the competition throughout its history has always been about change and innovation. If you look back to the structure of the league table for the competition in 2001, yeah. there ain't many teams left in the competition who were there then because it's always evolved, always changed. Yeah. And that has to be the way moving forward. Yeah, and I do think in the long term, perhaps you know, 10, 15 years, people We'll look back at this as the first step, but uh, as Roger said, you know, solving that global season uh, issue. I think what you've got to remember as well is professional rugby is a, it's a very young sport. It's 19, 1990, whatever it was, 95, wasn't it? Just after yeah, World Cup yeah. 95. So, I mean, it's, and it's evolving all the time. Um, obviously, the Southern Hemisphere stole a march. Um, as soon as it was declared, they had their season structure sorted out, and it, it was left to sort of. Uh, Northern Hemisphere, tackle it in different ways, very much on the hoof. Now I think there's a, there's a potential opportunity for it all to calm down. People are learning about players' contracts, 
TV deals, etc., etc. It's it, it's all evolving, and I think this is this this is one critical step in the involvement of rugby, and it's great that the Pro 14 are driving it. Great. That's the excitement and the positivity about the league changes out of the way, but perhaps to take a backward step and an area where there was some negativity was at the end of last season, off the back of a year that had promised so much and petered away and to end up in a very disappointing fashion. I'm supposing that the board management have looked at what went on and have had the discussions and are now in a position where everyone's happy, confident moving forward to the new season. Yeah, we were obviously all disappointed with the way the season finished. And that what makes it worse is that's what's still fresh in the mind. There was nothing to be able to put it right, and that makes it even more difficult when you've got to wait until the following season to to get back into your play and to to make that right. So it sticks it sticks to the mind because it's fresh. I mean, we've looked at it as an end of year review, but that's that's just not the 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 way we go about it. We review week to week, day to day. The sessions they do on an individual basis and team and all the way through. So. There was no way that was left to an end of season review to to work out what what the issues we had. And again, you know, we look at the season as a whole. We got a young squad. What did that mean in the pre-season that we put more work in at that stage of the year? Looking back after reviewing it, did that have an effect on the young guys at the end of the season being a bit fatigued? Everything being well, we, you know, we'd have had less of an injury list, which would have mean you could have rotated squad a bit bit more. But we weren't didn't have that luxury. We were having to push players through who were fatigued. We didn't have the numbers there to, you know, to compensate for that. Which means older players are on modified training weeks. You got younger athletes not used to that level of intensity, season long, fatigue starting to kick in. The injury situation that comes off the back of that. Add to that, then you know, managing players coming back from national camps, and we 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 love the fact and take with pride the amount of internationals we provide. When they go away to camp, they work hard there. Now usually you're in a position to rest them players up coming back in but because of the whole squad status we were less able to do that with a number of players and it all added to it and it was a progressive thing it wasn't uh, something you could put your finger on as a one-off you know it started with the, la- the last seven games you now we pulled it back round. we got top four we got into a quarter final and like i said at the end of the season yes we disappointed with the end but if you look at the season as a whole and a lot of the positives from our attacking play we were in, in the European fixtures and the, and the tries we scored through the season. There were a lot of positives that come up out the back of that. So, yes, we were all you know frustrated and disappointed of the way it ended. You have to step back and, and look at the whole picture to see where we are moving forward. And you know, we're all excited and behind Steve and the team over there about starting this Pro 14 Championship. When you look at the new season, obviously the new structure for the Pro 14, a really exciting but incredibly challenging European pool. What do you think? Is it a case of oh my god, or is it? I'm, really I'm, 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 I'm the other way around. I'm quite excited by it. Ultimately, we've got the best teams in Europe coming to the Liberty. Now, as players, they want to you know measure yourself against the best. But we've got the opportunity to do that. You know, and people might say, oh, doom and gloom, you know, group of death. For me, that that's that's a challenge you've got to walk towards. You know, you're not shy away from. And I'm sure all the players feel like that. The management do. The squad will go into that. And it's a measurement against the best in Europe. What more can you ask for as a player? And the coaching team with another change. Chris Gibbs heading back to New Zealand. Alan Clark coming in. A pretty steady coaching setup. And it's something that you're looking for them to to show the learning and the growth year and year off the back of last season's disappointment. Yeah, you know, Gibbo added a lot to the environment, brought his, uh, you know, coming from New Zealand, bringing our ex- extra cultural kind of uh, addition with him, um, and then looking to bring Alan Clark in. And I suppose the focus for Alan would be particularly around set piece, scrum and line out as a focus. Um, ex front row himself, so he's got a bit more knowledge around scrum time. So if you're looking for where our game needs to improve, it'll be particularly around the scrum. And I'm sure Alan will work hard on, on, on rectifying that. But a, 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 point, a point there as well about, about that. If you look at um, statistically where we finished as regards um, our attack came about second yep. in the league. Um, our defence came about second in the league. Our set piece was way down. Was way down. So as part of the as part of the review that that, that um, Andrew referred to, these things are taken on board. I go back to the disappointing end of last season. It, it was disappointing. And no one's more disappointed than us. But 
what, what, what Andrew's outlined there, they're not excuses, they're, they're reasons. They're reasons, and there are, there are positive parts of the season, but we have taken on board critically where we feel we went, we went wrong. Um, so it's been, um, the review, as Andrew said, wasn't just at the end of the season, it was right throughout the season. But then we had critical things happen to us. We, we ended up with something like 17 senior players unavailable. Right. Yeah. And not only unavailable, but, but, but key players at key times. The first choice tight head, we went, we, we went to, the, uh, to the Munster game with um, two frontline tight heads not available. Um, the skipper, Alan Wynne, had been unavailable since the, since the French game. Uh, you lose people like Jeff Hassler right at the beginning of the season, oh, Owen we'll, Watkin, we'll etc. Right and, 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 and so it goes on. They're not excuses, they're, they're reasons. And we've managed the season. Much bigger workload for people like Rory Thornton than ever we anticipated. Bradley Davis, he, he missed the season, which, which was unexpected. And it, so they're, 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 um, they're reasons. But it's not to say that we've sort of said, oh, that was, that, that was his excuses, are we done better? No, we looked, at, we looked at the bad parts as well. And hence, Andrew was articulated there about, uh, about Alan Clark, because we are looking, we are looking to improve our, our set piece. And um, I, I, think, I think you'll see come the season uh, good strides initially, and it'll get better as the season goes on. I think that's the key, that it's not something that's just good strides now, but it's something constant striving to be better, constant development will allow us to achieve what we want to over well, like, the Well, like the defence of Brad Davis, if you like, you know. Yeah. Initially, it was, a, it was a massive step up, and it gradually improved. So we'd be looking for the same for, for, for our set-piece work.